Halifax, Nova Scotia, look what I'm wearing. You probably can't even see it. We got Steve Asheim or Ashim or Asheim. Asheim. Asheim for now. We're going to change it. So how's it going with you? It's going good. Just got into Canada and um, get ready to do a show here in Halifax. Halifax, Nova Scotia. That's right. It took I don't, I don't know how many years to get you guys here. Is it you've never seen this part of the country? Well, no, we've like been up into Maine, and I know it's kind of the same territory. Like it kind of looks the same, but uh, no, we've never been up into actual uh, Nova Scotia before. It's a first for us. So it's good to be here. I mean, back in the, the early '90s, when you guys were like making the death metal scene, you know what it is today. A lot of people said, you know, DSI should be coming to these places, and never came. You know, it's uh, it took a long time. Took a long time. Well, you know, we hit a lot of the other places in Canada, uh, lots of Montreal and Toronto, uh, and we only just started going to Vancouver a few years ago, five years ago, and you would think we'd have been there before then, but, you know, circumstances are what they are, Yeah. as far as tours and, uh, and uh, making a tour happen, as far as uh, rooting it, you know. Drumming, you're getting faster and faster all the time. <laughs> How do you keep it in, in health for this, you know, because it's, uh, it's a workout in itself. Well, you know, lots of working out. I'm staying healthy. Uh, I work out at the gym. I got a gym in my house. So I stay healthy that way. Also, the drumming. It's like you just can't let yourself get uh, complacent in your skills. You got to keep pushing yourself. Like, as I get older, younger drummers come up and they're faster. I got to keep up with them. So I try and keep up the speed and intensity of the young players, but still retain the old rhythmic, like my old rhythm style. Um, as long as I can implement both, be fast and crazy and uh, rhythmic, I'm still doing my job. And like I say, it's exercise. It keeps me young. Just doing the job keeps me fit to do the job, you know? Yeah. Let's say back in 87, 88, you know, the founding bases of AMO and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. For yourself, like, you know, there's no influences to look and say, I'm going to play like this. You know, where did you find that influence to, to make that drumming out, out of something that wasn't invented yet? Well, there were bits and pieces of stuff. Like, there were some little short blast beats taking place. I remember Cryptic Slaughter was doing some blasting back in 86 or 87. Morbid, like, they had just got rid of Mike Browning and brought in Pete Sandoval. So I had seen what, what they were doing in the clubs before their record came out. And we had experimented with it early on by about 88. And, um, and we were also, like, my main music influence was Slayer. And so it was just being Slayer but taking it further, you know. Uh, and blast beats and double kicks all the time was just about the only way to go. So it was like, I uh, just tried to make the drumming as intense as possible, but also peaceful and rhythmic, you know, as far as beats. I wasn't, I just didn't want to be a barrage of chaos. I wanted there to be books and beats that were cool and all but powerful and fast. You know? So with that, we have what it is now. It's getting faster and faster. You guys got a new album I've seen that is going to be surfacing soon. Yeah, we just finished uh, all the tracking. You guys mixing it now. Okay. Yeah. So what type of influences you use on this one? Looks like? Well, it's like we are, uh, uh, Glenn in particular wanted to go back to like a first album style. Where okay. It's just basic riffs and of course heavy and stuff. And uh, so we use that. Like the riffs are hooky, the beats are more simple. And that's not even true. The beats are, are not simple. They're pretty complex. And it uh, really went over the top with the fills. That was really good. And of course, we got some of the fastest stuff to date. A couple songs are super fast. Lots of doubles and lots of fills. And it'll be a good, tasty record. We're trying to be like a, um, like I said, more, more first album, rhythmic wise. Like catchy hooks and beats and just old school. Just old school. Because even, I mean, when you, when you listen to the self titled album, Legion has so much interesting vibe going on there, you know, certain uh, techniques, you know, in inventing the route yeah, you know, yeah, to, yeah. to what it is today sure. in me death metal genre uh, in general. That's, you know, that may be true, and I'm glad someone thinks so. Uh, and it's hard to reinvent what's already been invented. We just right. kind of try and bring the old school intensity to, to the new thing. And, like inventing uh, uh, intricate beats to a part, like I said, it's not a new thing, but coming up with new interesting parts is a new thing. So while the style may not be new, some of the parts and, and beats are new. It'll be interesting to hear. And there's a couple on there that are just really, there's this one song in particular, it's just really old school 
riffs, down picking hard chunks, but really cool beats. It's like it builds up, it's choppy, it's heavy, and it, it's good stuff. Hopefully people really dig it, man. You find that now with you know the inter internet taking over so much, there's no more real record stores that's harder to sell? Even oh, for an outfit like DSI? Yeah, definitely. Our sales have come down and down. It's like we used to get royalties, that's dried up. Uh, it's pretty sad, you think. That, uh, I mean, there are fans, it's like, who's going to download our music for free? People who don't like us? No, people who like us and right. listen to it or taking our, you know. It's like, I hate to be mad at our fans for stealing from us, but in effect, that's what's happening. It's like, you know, a couple more years of this and we'll just be out of business. So it's like, what's more important, get a couple free songs or knock your favorite band out of business? Because that's where it's going. So that's sad, you know, when an outfit like DSI is in that situation. There it is. We're in that situation. Wow. It's like we're, we're scrambling to find ways to make it worthwhile to put out records. It's like, you know, next year us doing albums, is, it's not going to happen anymore. We'll put out one song or another song and then tour for it. It's like, why bother put out an album when someone's just going to steal it? Go make a single. Well, make a go single. Back to Elvis Presley days. That's right. Make a single. Yeah. Put that out and people can uh, steal that. That's why they're only stealing one song. You know, and it's like when people go and they put it on Spotify, it's like, well, so we're going to get point zero 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 one penny for per play. It's like, yeah, it's a slap in the face, really. Now, for radio playing stuff like that, I'm sure it's still going on, but, you know, the stations are playing the aside. Well, you know. Uh, sure, sure, there's some of that going on, but uh, like I said, it's, the industry isn't one of the things to be. Everyone's just streaming it, making it for free. And um, so it's going to take its toll eventually. We won't be doing this anymore. Now we said, for me, I love doing it, but I mean, if a grocery store, if everyone just came in and stole all this stuff, he'd be out of business. Right. You know, that's what's going to happen. Now when you go to shows, you sign stuff, I'm sure, autographs and stuff. Do you find that there's a lot of the seat like I brought, that I brought there are fan, Yeah, there are fans who buy the stuff and they want stuff signed and that's cool. Uh, yeah, but you think say you're an old schooler. People who grew up who are now only 20, all they know is downloading stuff for free. They're not gonna buy. There's no more CD stores to buy stuff at anyway. You know, you go to Best Buy and there used to be five rows of stuff of CDs. Now it's one little section of CDs. Yeah, their metal section is even limited. Yeah. More limited. Yeah, we're not in there. It's not worth carrying it for these stores. Touring throughout the world from all the years of DSI's history. Is it getting better? More comfortable touring? Or how's your lifestyle in this? Oh uh, well touring is it's kinda of the same. We always kinda of trudge through the clubs and bars and some theaters and venues and it is what it is you know we're still we're still uh, able to do it and uh we'll come out a little bit ahead so it really hasn't changed much it's not like we're elevated into this place where we're um playing the royal albert hall or anything like that no we still play dirty clubs and well and that's how we made it through man you know that's, we'll continue to do it as long as we can another few years yeah, see how far we go. I wish DSI like, so much success and luck and all the guys are really deserving. I appreciate but, that. You know, us old school works, you know, we're in the early 90s. Uh, you know, I know you know, and some people still do. But it's like a whole new generation of entitled kids who just want everything for free, and they don't get it. Yeah, you know, doesn't matter to them. No, it doesn't. They don't want anything else. They want to download collections and collections. That's right. But then you look at it, do you want the music promoted? You know, from sharing, stuff like that. It's, it's a weird like, concept, you know, like, no. Yeah, no, we don't. You know, listen to college radio, like it used to be shared in the old days, you know? Shared. It's, it's a nice word. Yeah, but it's really stealing. Yeah. I could go rob a bank and then share all that money. Yeah. Still stolen. Yeah. We'll see. Pleasure talking to you here and how about another school show with Hey you. man, I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's good to meet you finally. Yeah. Okay, enjoy the show. We'll keep doing what we can as long as we can. And I know you will. And 
but hopefully this, this thing called economy is going to get better. That's the big problem, I think, mostly. Well, I wouldn't count on it. Yeah. <laughs> I really wouldn't. Yeah. But uh, like I said, we'll keep our heads above water as long as we can. You know, that's what we always did. So we'll keep fighting the fight, man. Yeah. We'll release another Blu-ray or release a Blu-ray someday. <laughs> we may. We yeah. may. We know. Well, they're probably not. But <laughs> <laughs> it'll just get downloaded for free. Yeah. You know how much it costs to make a Blu-ray? A lot more than we'd ever make that. Excellent stuff. We gotta stop because uh, Tim Lizzie's playing upstairs. Yeah, yeah.